Flow 8 firmware version 11749 is here and Behringer has been listening to customer requests. This time they've added a pre post fader option for the monitor one, two sends. And this is easily one of the top requests that users have had for this mixer. So it's really exciting to see them added here for everyone. What's the big deal with a pre post option though? If you're just getting comfortable with aux sends, watch our aux send video from the live sound basic series to get fully immersed and up to speed. If you want to send a musician a monitor feed to a powered speaker, a pre-fade send is definitely the way to go. You want that send to be pre or before the channel faders so that it's a completely independent send or mix just for them. Now, what if you want to send a feed to a camera for streaming? Well, in that case, you might want to use a post-fade send and that pickoff point will be after the channel fader and as such will track as a function of how much that channel is turned up in the main mix. By setting each channel's post fade send to Unity, you create an exact copy of the main mix, but going out on an independent output with an independent EQ and level for your camera. From that point, if you need a bit more or less of something in that camera feed versus the house mix, you can go back to the post fade aux send and of course make adjustments to that channel's post fade send level. Another place you might use a post fade send would be to feed a zone or delay speaker a similar but maybe not an exact copy of the main mix. To help with this, the Flow 8 also has delay at the output of each monitor send, so you can time align those feeds as you need to. And this is a critical tool for covering rooms effectively in real world situations. Even the smallest rooms, you might need to throw a small speaker out to cover a weird overflow area, and time aligning that with a little bit of delay can make a huge difference. Now for anybody feeding the headphone out using the monitor one, two sends, you can also use the post fade option now, and that can certainly be useful in some situations. At the moment, you do need to go into the settings to be able to tell if the mixer is set up in pre or post fade. Some indicator to let you know which was engaged would be really nice. Maybe a color change here between green and yellow could work. That's on some other consoles and that seems to work well, but you'll need to look at the routing setup page in the app right now to be able to tell which way the console set up. Another thing that will obviously get some attention here is that even if you're not in stereo link mode with monitor one and two linked, the choice for pre or post is all or nothing. So at the moment, there's no way to do one pre fade send and one post fade send. And that might fall short of what some folks were hoping to do with this console in their applications. You've got to choose whether both monitor sends are pre fade or both are post fade before getting started. But with that in mind, it's a nice quick update and a really usable new function that a lot of folks have been waiting for. And I'm sure a lot of folks will be very happy to add to their Flow 8. If you haven't done this before, check out our previous Flow firmware update guide linked below. To update your firmware, first go to the main product page for the Flow 8 and get the latest USB driver version 5.12 right now and install that on your system before doing anything else. Next, you'll need to get the Simply Put Update tool, which is also available on the main product page, and that's for Mac, Windows, or Linux. Now connect the Flow 8 to your computer using the Type B port, the big port on the back of the Flow. Launch the Simply Put tool, and it will pre-select the latest firmware that's available on the update server for you. Once you click through that update, it will reboot the mixer automatically, and you should be all set to go. You'll definitely need to get the latest version of the app though for your control device. And that's gonna be Flowmix 1.5 right now as this is being filmed. Now, if you haven't updated the app in a while, you'll notice that this version has a few other changes too. Beyond the new pre post option for routing to the monitor bus, you'll also see a new preference for showing the mute button on the mixer page, new channel icons in the mixer and stage views. Tap tempo can now be adjusted on all layers of the stage view. And there's a new way to operate controls with rotary gestures. And also they've improved some of the uh, interaction when you're doing linear control gestures as well. So that's pretty cool. Like with all these updates, the best place to catch up on the new things, any bug fixes, anything you've missed in the last few versions is to read those release notes. They're included. You can get them in the simply put tool, and it's a great way to stay up to date on what happens every time there's an update for this mixer. That's all for this one on the Flow 8 and firmware version 11749. Thanks for watching.